break yourself, fool! Tight. Have you driven a <laughs> So, in the last couple months, my rear brakes have started to squeak. Um, as they do, it started off really, you know, slight. It was on and off. Um, when I hit the brakes, the squeak goes away. And, um, you know, when I get going again, I, I can hear, I couldn't tell if it was the front or the rear. I think the fronts are squeaking a little bit too, but the rear is really squeaking loud now because it's progressively gotten worse and worse to the point where it's just um, constant. Um, at slow, sp I'm, I'm sure it's at high speeds too, but I can't hear it because Jeep. But um, driving through alleyways, it's, it's, it's gotten to the point where it's embarrassing. So I need to do something about this. Um, these brakes are about, I think they're about six years old. They came with the axle. This is a, a G2, a Dana 44 that I bought and I had it fully equipped with brakes. And so it came with the calipers and all that stuff. But, uh, at any rate, the brakes were all brand new when I put the axle in about five or six years ago. So, um, I got this power stop set up. A buddy of mine actually bought this and it turned out to be, I think he needed the front and he got the rear instead by accident. So I got this from him and uh, this should be, because I'm not gonna replace the calipers. Those are, you know, they should be fine. Um, this should be a quick, you know, in and out job, maybe 45 minutes at the most to do just the rotors and the pads. But um, unfortunately, these are um, supposed to give you better performance. They're supposed to give you twice the performance, I think, according to what uh, they advertise. And so there's a very specific um, break-in procedure, which um, requires you to do a series of intervals of uh, 40 miles an hour to 10. I think you're supposed to do that three to five times and then 35 to five and then you're supposed to drive around for five minutes to let the brakes cool. Um, and during this time, you're not supposed to basically sit on the, on the brakes. So you can't, you can't uh, come to a complete stop. And I live in the city. <laughs> so that's, this is completely, um, you know, it's not possible in the city. So I'm gonna have to drive about 35 to 40 minutes to a rest stop on the highway and swap the swap the brakes there and go through the break-in procedure while I do laps around the rest stop and then I can um, you know I can drive it home and I'll be done uh, so that said I want to make sure that I have everything that I need and all the tools that I need before I you know get to the rest stop and and find out that I'm missing uh, you know 13 mil wrench or whatever and um, and have to put it all back together and drive home with the old brakes again, um, cursing at myself. So these are the rotors. They're pretty nice, nice and shiny. These have sat on my shelf for God two years now. I originally intended on doing all the brakes at once. I like to do sort of these shock and all um, repair replacement jobs. I did that with my, my cooling system, but um, it just didn't work out that way. I needed, I needed to do these right away and the front brakes still have a little bit of life in them and shipping from the US to Taiwan for the, the front kit um, would just be too much. I'm gonna be back in the US in August, so. It's, it's better for me to just do this now and then do the front in August. So here's my rotors and this, I'm not sure what these are for. Uh, you put your weed in here. Yeah, I don't know. I'll have to... I'm not very experienced with brakes, so I'm kind of just going through this as somewhat of a noob. I've done brakes before, but not many times in the past. And it's been a long time since I've done brakes. So here's my, my pads. 
So right now the, the plan is to just go through the motions, not install it, or maybe I could install it and just not drive on them, just pull them back off once I'm done. I just wanna make sure that I can fully install this at the rest stop without running into any, any uh, snags and having to put the old stuff back on the Jeep to drive all the way home for just one wrench or screwdriver or whatever, a part that's missing from this set maybe. Or, so that's, uh, oh, just got some grease here. I guess that's for the, uh, yeah, that's for the hardware. Yeah, that's my, that's my squeaky wheel. The uh, passenger side is actually quiet. That noise is coming from the other side. So check this out. That's the edge of the pad. Look at that. The rotor dug into the pads. That little mark right there is the separation in the pads. I dug that far into the pads on this side. I can turn it but it's definitely making some serious contact with the rotor, the pads are. That's really, that can't be good. All right, let's get in here and take a look. Oh yeah, look at that. Can you see that little ridge in there? That's not good, that can't be good. Uh oh, that seals, that seal is done. I think I got a bad caliper. I just noticed something, um, even if this caliper had been good, I would have had a problem because you see the size of the springs on the back of that pad? Those are about twice the size of the springs on the power stop pads. So these pads wouldn't have matched up with that caliper anyway. So here's where the plot thickens. I mentioned that I bought this axle from four wheel parts. Uh, this is a G2. So I just assumed that these brakes, because they came included on the axle when I bought it, I bought it, you know, end to end fully equipped. I assumed that these were G2 brake calipers. And uh, that's apparently not the case because I can't find G2 brake calipers anywhere. I don't know if they're even a thing. Um, so after doing some, some cross-referencing of photos and part numbers and stuff, um, I found, uh, Terraflex calipers that look like they might be the same, but I wasn't exactly sure. So I got on the, uh, Jeep forums, all the big ones and Facebook groups and stuff. And I discovered that these are actually... Um, this brake kit that they, the G2 uses on these axles is actually modeled after the brakes on an 8.8 .8 rear, which um, basically you can get brakes from a, I think it's an 89 um, Ford Explorer, and those pads will fit this. But being that I'm living in Taiwan, I, I want my Jeep to be as compatible with factory stuff as it can possibly be. Um, because of import complications and stuff. So uh, 
what I did was just order the, the power stop calipers to go along with the pads that I have. And uh, so those calipers are, they're basically just rebuilt factory calipers. And I'll be able to, if I'm in a pinch and I need a need to replace a pad, I can just take a, a factory um, OEM style brake pad for a uh, 2003 TJ and pop it in into the power stop caliper in the future. Um, I really don't want to deal with oddball stuff like this. If you're planning on getting a power stop set up, the, the rotor and the pads for your G2 axle, you're going to have to get the, the calipers because they're not going to match. Let's get this rotor off of here. Yeah, I'm glad I took this apart in the, um, in the garage here instead of 40 minutes away at a rest stop because that, that would have been infuriating at least i got confirmation on the rotors they fit so this is uh rear driver's side i don't know why it makes a difference maybe because of the angle of the slots i don't know but the rotors fit so all i need to do is order a new caliper and um then i can get back to work one week later and no other time in history can you get a set of brake calipers shipped thousands of miles internationally in only five days. Hell yes. You can't beat it. <laughs> Two brand new power stop calipers. So the whole gang's here now. I got two calipers, two rotors, set of pads, and I should be good to go. Ooh, these are pretty. Look at that. Yeah, you can see. See the size of the piston there? The 8.8 .8 calipers have a steel piston and it's a lot, it's a lot larger. That was the whole problem in the first place. But these um, power stop calipers have aluminum piston pistons, I think. Um, as well as the factory, but I'm not exactly sure. I'm gonna... Yeah, yeah, they're not magnetic. That was, that was correct information I gave there. Um, courtesy of uh, Mr. Blaine of uh, Black Magic fame and Curry and Savvy and all kinds of other fame. That dude is a wizard, uh, hence his avatar. But uh, yeah, so the, the gang's all here. Hopefully, this all goes together without any issues. I think um, what I'm going to do, originally I was going to put some temporary pads on these so I could go, uh, so I could drive about 40 minutes out to um, a rest stop where I would have room to install the power stop pads and I would have room to do the, the, the break-in procedure um, sort of by the books. But... I don't know. It, it seems like kind of a waste of time to me. I, I think what I can do is um, I can get these on with the new with the new pads and just sort of I can drive in limp mode to the the highway is about a three minute drive from here. Um, and I think if I if I just take it real slow and I use my emergency brake at red lights and stop lights, I think I should be OK. Oops. So, looks like I'm doing this one first. Yeah, that's the one.
price. Now this kit came with these slider caps, I guess, for lack of a better word. And it, it came it came with this one and another one that's uh, sort of funky. It had this sort of tongue on the end. And I can't see what that's for. So I just took what was on there and cleaned it up and just snapped it back on there. Maybe if somebody in the comments section knows, you can chime in and let me know. But for now, I'm just running with the old style. Kind of hard to see what I'm doing here. Got the bottom one. There we go. Top one's in. And I got my banjo bolt, old banjo bolt with new crush washers. Uh, something I noticed, which is kind of unfortunate, is um, one of the calipers, the bag with the hardware was open and it had a little slice in it and the crush washers were missing. I can't see anything back here. I'm not sure how this was on here, to be honest. I might want to go back and look at the footage or pictures I may have taken. All right, so I just checked and the spec for brake caliper bolts um, is 11 foot pounds. So let's get these. Okay. Okay, well, I need to check the specs on the hose, which unfortunately I need my phone for, and my phone is on my forehead right now, so. And scene. Um. All right, so it looks like we're at 23 for the torque on the, the uh, brake line, and that's a 14 mil socket. Okay. Okay, that's a wrap for the driver's side. I'm gonna put the wheel back on and drop it down. Um, probably tomorrow afternoon, I'm gonna pull it into the center of the garage here and, and hit the passenger side. I'll have more room that way. Okay, let's see what we're dealing with here. Better. This side was actually okay. See you later. This might actually be easier. Yep. So I just want to get this line in for now. I want to just stop the bleeding basically. Um, and I want to clean the hell out of all of this. This whole area needs to get cleaned. Okay, so now that we're all sparkly clean, somewhat clean enough. Rear passenger side. Same as the other side, these are two 12 mil 
bolts that hold the hold the caliper to the bracket. Hmm. You know what? I think I am gonna change this upper clip. This one's too short. Yeah. I'm gonna put the wider clip on there. The new clips are about a quarter inch longer. And that is able to pick up that, whatever that spring is for. <clears throat> okay. There we go. And now I need to torque these bolts. So I'm gonna do uh, 11 foot pounds on the caliper mounting bolts. Okay, that one's already done. All right, let's get this wheel back on. Actually, I'm gonna cut here because I need to clean all this brake dust off of here. This is, this is disgusting. Look at this, look at the back side of this wheel. all the way through baby that's what I'm talking about all right here we go
first legit break. Quiet and smooth. All right, braking process is done. I just went back and looked at the footage. I actually had my, my kilometers per hour wrong on the on the top speed. I was supposed to be going up to 65 and I went up to 60, but I did it like five or six times and uh, and I gave plenty of time to cool down. So I, other than this, the uh, kilometers per hour, the top kilometers per hour, I exceeded everything that the instructions were um, recommending. And I got a nice coating on the rotor. I'm assuming that's what you're looking for, but uh, that's on both sides. I don't have any brake dust at all. No, sque <clears throat> no squeaking, squealing. Um, it's braking fine. I don't really notice that big of a difference. I think that's. I think you get the big difference when you do the fronts, which I'm going to do uh, probably this summer. But um, yeah, everything seems to be working fine. The pedal feels good. Everything's everything's nice and tight. So I'm going to wrap this up here and call it a success. Thanks for watching. Well, these are the breaks. Break it up, break it up, break it up, break down.